Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Around interview show. Now, today, and I know they say this most weeks, but we are joined by a man that has had an incredible life. What a life. We're going to dive into that across multiple sports. A world champion, Anthony the Man Mundine. What's up, brother Jim? How you doing, man? I'm doing very well. You are going to have to forgive me a little bit for this because I say this to a lot of guests. I've been very fortunate um, in this position, sat in this chair, speaking to some guests, but you are another um, another pinch level, yourself, another level, buddy. another level, but another <laughs> another pinch yourself moment. Yeah, because um, myself and an, another redheaded lad, when we were about ten, eleven, mm. we would pretend to be you and Blacklock and commentate <laughs> ourselves. And I am not joking. <laughs> the lad is Mark Beach. We played at St. Helens Crusaders. <laughs> no way. And we'd be like, oh, Blacklock Mundine. Like, you know, just mucking around after yeah, training. Yeah, yeah. Um, I loved watching you play halfway around the world. And it's yeah. it's quite surreal, like, thinking back to that little boy. Uh -huh. And now I am here, sat next to you. So yeah, pleasure, brother. It's pleasure. been, um, be, yeah. it's, it's absolutely crazy um, that I'm sat here next to you talking to you and going to talk about your life with you. So you... Yeah, it's a bit surreal. Um, talking about your life, how yeah. are you now? How how how's everything going? Yeah, everything is good, man. Alhamdulillah. Like, um, got a, a business, couple of businesses going with my brother boy, um, Ghosh Deher, who I've known since a teenager, and um, we have a construction business, indigenous construction business. Um, we work with the tier ones and, and government and stuff. Um, and I got my sisters in the disability space. Um, NDIS, so we started our own um, company called Miban, which is a services, disability services company that services the people, for the people, sort of by the people. We do that, you know, a lot of Aboriginal clients, but we take on anybody, white, black, brown or brindle, it doesn't matter who you are, we just want to give the right service and the right care for, for, the, for the people. Um, and then I do keynote speaking, uh, Monday mindset stuff. Um, I'm off to Dubai um, this weekend, good willing. Um, to to do some keynote speaking over there and sort of workshop over there. So and you just talk about your story, just you know, talk about my life, my my story, my journey, and how I had the the right the mindset and the, everything you need to be in order to become a champion and in order to become successful. You know what I mean? And they go through my story from from where it started to where it ended, and um, yeah, it's 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 very uplifting and very inspiring. So. Um, you know, I'm hopefully they'll get a lot out of it. And that takes you all around the world. Yeah, well, we're just starting to pick it pick it up now. Um, you know, I've doing I was doing it a lot in Australia. You know, just before COVID hit, and once that hit, it sort of slowed it down a little bit. But um, then we got back on track. Started going out to a lot of communities. I went went up to um, Darwin. Went up went out to Gruda Island. Went out down to um, um, Albany in in Western Australia. So I sort of go all over to. Um, to share my my story and sort of inspire, motivate, inspire um, all the the youngsters coming up. So you're doing all that, but are you retired from professional yeah, sport? Yeah, is that is it is it done? Because well, I'm re I'm retired from professional sport for sure. Because you know, in order to to get to be at that elite level, there's got to be um, your work ethic and your training reg regime and regiments got to be. Spot on and sacrifice, you know, sacrifice, as well. bro. Sacrifice, just hard work, dedication. Well, you, you're probably not doing all these other projects, yeah. If you if you're gonna train for a yeah. professional fight, yeah. so that's. But um, I've been offered a, a few exhibitions, which will be great. So I can train when I want, do what I want. You know, that's to train twice a day, or you know, sometimes three times a day. I could train once a day, get in shape, do some sparring, be be healthy. Um, and um, enjoy, enjoy the sport that I love. I love boxing, so yeah, it'll be great to, to jump in there again. So with all that, yeah. if you meet someone for the very first time, how do you introduce yourself? Like, what, what, what do you well, say what to them? What do you mean? Well, like, say you go to one of these keynotes. Oh, yeah. Like, or, or, uh, or say, say you're on holiday, and I always think about how you introduce yourself, say, in America. Like yeah. and you meet someone for the very first time. What, what, what do you? How do you? How do you describe I, I yourself? I don't talk. Uh, if if I'm doing a keynote speaking, well, 
there's a presentation or a, or a video will come out with music and mm. show what I've done and my achievements as far as football and boxing and things like that. So they sort of got a rough idea. This guy's a bit of a bit of a, a beast, you know what I mean? And uh, when they start watching that, then I start introduce myself. You know, Anthony Mundine. Um, you know, but my, all my resume sort of been, you know. Put it out to them already, so they sort of know, you know, who I am by that stage. What about if you if you met like a, a stranger, like you, uh, you know, just I'm sitting just... in the cafe and you're like, oh, what what's your story? Like, what what what? Are you, how yeah. do you sort of like intro yourself? I just I just tell them tell them the facts, man. Tell them the truth. I'm, I'm, I've always told the facts. I've always told told the truth. No matter if it's media, no matter if it's anybody that I meet or whatever it may be, and um, like I just say like. You know, I'm Anthony Mundine. I'm, you know, I used to play rugby league. I was one of the best, if not the best, at the time. And um, then, I went, then through a lot of stuff that I, I didn't re- agree on, and, you know, I was talking about the racism stuff, and I said I, I quit that and I went to boxing and I became a three-time or technically four-time world champion. You know what I mean? And um, I said, "Wow, how, how that? That's like, excuse me." I said, yeah, man. And then I just. Just go in there for them, and then we start talking and get deeper from there. Yeah. Well, it, it is quite the life. When, when you were coming through as a as a sort of teenager, um, obviously very good at rugby league, yeah. was there ever a, a choice as a youngster or was it always football? That- no, nah, I knew that. I knew that. I wanted to – I knew from a very young age, maybe between ages of 8 to 12, that I was going to be a champion football player. And a champion box fighter. Oh, but you... I knew I was going to be both. I knew I was going to be world champ at that age. You had that... But, but, so were you boxing then? No, nah, my dad. My dad was a fighter. Yeah. So I used to see my dad as a young kid and get all this admiration from a lot of people, especially black fellas. And um, I used to be amazed by that. And I just thought, he must be must have went all right, you know. <laughs> so he, then come to know that he was one of the premier middleweights... Um, in the seventies, you know, he fought the best, one of the best, if not one of the greatest um, middleweights of all time, Carlos Monzon. He fought for fourteen for the middleweight championship of the world. And back in them days, there was there was no three or four uh, belt era. This was like one belt, yeah, one so one, one yeah. champion, and the champion was Carlos Monzon. And if you know, boxing people know that he was like an animal. You know what I mean? And my dad went to Buenos Aires. To fight him for the championship, he, he he was ranked number one, so he he was one of the best middleweights of all time. He beat Bunning Sterling, he beat Emil Griffith, so he beat some some big names, and he went to um to to fight Monzon in in Buenos Aires, um, Argentina. He was getting death threats that week, and from who? From fans, from Monzon's fans. Oh right, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, and then um. He was petrified <laughs> before he went into the ring, but he got went in the ring, done done well against Monzon, but he got stopped in the seventh round, and you know didn't get that capture that uh, w- the world title that he so yearned. But he 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 held the middleweight, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and heavyweight title of Australia at one time. What all those weight categories? All that, all those weight category. He went from middleweight to heavyweight. No one's ever done it in the history of sport in Australia. So he's, he was, he's a legend, you know, he's, he's a living legend. He's still alive, he's, thank God, alhamdulillah. Um, he's still alive, so he's, uh, and, he, and he's, still, he's still hitting a bag for an hour every probably third, second, third day. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So he was, he was your inspiration? But he, was my, he was my inspiration, but... Um, but it was fo- football? What I'll, did you enjoy about football? Like what, how, I'll, if you see your dad being a boxer... And you're thinking that's who I want to be. Like, how did football grab now, your football, attention? Fo- well, football is like prevalent in the Aboriginal communities and uh, black blackfellas in general, urban blackfellas or bush 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 black blackfellas. So, being a young fella, like you know, the, we had the Aboriginal knockouts um, and all that. So you see, uh, I started playing footy when I was four. So I started playing footy and then I was. By the time I was five, six, seven, I was scoring six, seven tries a game. I was a beast, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, um, you know, I was talking smack when I was young. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was talking smack when I was young. So when I come to the, to the, and all the juniors 
like Australian schoolboys, Australian junior kangaroos, state teams, um, you know, rep teams and all that. I made it all. I've done it all in the juniors. I went back to school for one year just to make the Australian schoolboys. Oh, right. Yeah. Was that against the... Uh an English touring team, or did yeah, you go no, over they there? come, they come over here. They come over here, and they were dirty. Let me tell you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they were dirty. They were dirty. Oh, but first hour, I, I, I had a run, and I was about to get up, and a bloke come from the back and just grabbed my ball and squeezed them hard. <laughs> that must be one of your tactics, man. <laughs> I was like, holy yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. So you you dominated the rap scene growing up, yeah. So uh, a career. So in- I was touted. I knew I was I was touted to. To be something like I made the Norwich Rising Star team, which is like Andrew Johns um, and all that. Um, I think that was in '93 or '92, and um, I was touted to be one of the ne- the next big thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, it was inevitable. You were gonna dominate the professional field. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you find that when you you first started playing NRL? Were you we obviously very confident, like yeah. you spoke about talking smack. But when you got onto the NRL field, did that change you at all? Nah, nah. You that, just yourself. That competitive fire, that competitive energy, that's shifted to to another year. And um, I looked at all my, other, especially my opponents, as far as like, you know, playing my position. I went because I played center all my career as, as a junior. I was a center in Australian schoolboys and all that. I was trying to center, but then. Brian Smith, who coached at St. George from 93, I think, to 96, he he seen a lot of um, ability, ability to create and things like that. So he, he put me to 5'8". So I went from, from Jersey Flag, which was under 18, under 19s back then. Oh, no, I might be under 18s. Under 18s back then, um, up to reserve grade, straight from there to straight to reserve grade. So oh, that's back, quite the back jump. then... It was first grade, like NRL, reserve grade, twenty ones. So I went from straight from from under nine to under eighteens, straight to reserve grade, um, to five eight. Yeah, wow. He saw that um, that I had, uh, I was good with my hands and I could create stuff for other people and I, and I, and I, not only that, I could finish. You know. Yeah. Was yeah. it was it good to have that person to encourage you with that? with that natural ability because there are some youngsters that come through all out attack mm. and then they get to the NRL and it's sort of like it's discouraged a little bit. Yeah. Do, yeah. do, you, do you know what I mean? Like Man, they try and make you play structure. It's too, I mean, you can play structure. You have to play structure, but at the end of the day, guys with that, got, got that X factor, guys that, that can pull a rabbit out of the hat, so to speak, they have to let play and see, play eyes up. You know what I mean? Play off the cuff. And I was given the green light from day one. Yeah, like and then, what what age were you when you when you made your debut? When you uh, when eighteen, you, and you were playing regular first team. No, nah, yeah, or well, you in? No, nah, I was eighteen. I made my debut at eighteen, end of um, ninety three. I sat on the bench for the ninety three finals and the grand final. So, so I claimed that one, but I didn't play to <laughs> play. But I was on the bench and I I um, experienced that 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 campaign with them. Um, and then from 94, um, I, was, I was playing pretty regularly yeah. um, in a row. Yeah. So, but I was 18, then I turned 19 in 94. So still like a, uh, still a teenager. Yeah. Still a teenager. And then it wasn't long after that that um, the game went to war. Yes. For, you know, we hear and I've heard so many stories about that time. What was it, what was it like man, for, it was for, crazy, for you? it was crazy, man. It was like... It was crazy. I was just a young, talented kid. I mean, I wasn't getting paid that much money um, at the time. I was thinking, I think I was getting underpaid. I might be getting 30, 40 grand. Um, but I was pretty big back back in them days. And um, as soon as they they come in, um, the Super League and try to, you know, you know, take over the sort of the league and the game, um, man, it was like it, we hit lotto, you know what I mean? Like money was getting chuck left, right and centre. Just to sign on, you know, it was one hundred fifty, one hundred thousand just to sign on for the league, for which league you want to play with? Um, like, super check, league. check. Here's your signing on fee. That's a sign on fee. Not before, that's not even a contract. And that was like today's terms. That's probably three, four hundred thousand. You know what I mean? 
You know what? It's funny you say that. Um, just to go slightly off track, do you know Kylian Mbappe for Paris Saint Germain? He's about yeah. he's about to get 160 million sign on fee for Real Madrid next year. Ooh. It sort of goes to show, and and I know like in today's money, that's like 150 would be what about what would you classify that about half a mil today's money? Yeah, yeah. But like it's an, and people will say that that's a lot of money. Yeah. But in other sports oh, across the crazy. world, it's 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 soccer's absolutely next, soccer's, next, soccer's next level, man. Yeah, and especially with this yeah. Saudi Arabia money yeah, coming it's in, crazy, bro. Like they got England's money over there. Yeah, it. You know it it, I think it just puts things into perspective a little bit. Yeah. You know, when people go, oh, that's far too much money. It's like, look at what some sports yeah. stars are, are earning, earning around the world. It's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Bro. And that's that's 160 million euro just to sign for Real Madrid. Damn. That's not including his wages. That's no, that's no, like no, what you got yeah. at Super League. Yeah. Um, but back to you with, with the Super League. Did, did I read somewhere you... You'd signed with with both, and you yeah. were in court. <laughs> I signed with both, man. I, well, I I signed with the ARL. They offered me a one fifty, but I didn't take the I didn't take the check. I didn't cast the check, and I signed with um Super League, but I cast the check. You know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> I stopped off to, to play with Super League, and then um that was up at the Broncos, right? Broncos. Then I then the AR, NRL at, or ARL at the time took me to court. Took wanna, just you personally to court? Yes, to 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 because I signed signed their contract and and I reneged pretty much. Yeah, and went with the Super League. But what were they hoping to get out of that? To bring me back to the NRL. I mean the NRL. So that was there. Stop me! Stop me! To from, stop you going? Yeah, to stop me! To stop me from playing probably and, and going and trying you know you know show me show their power. But um, I end up playing the the season. Um, I got injured the first game, we, you know, against the Warriors. I think we played up um, Suncorp, or not Suncorp, um, ANZ Stadium in, in Brisbane. And then I was only I was out for about ten weeks. But I come back and I played the rest of the season pretty pretty good. And we played World Club Challenge. Um, went over to England, to your country. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and we played um, all over there. We played London Broncos, a um, couple other teams. And I, I, I carved up over there. I you know, played math, <laughs> and then um, and then during this, the the, the course were going back and forth, um, just getting setbacks. Um, Are you actually going in? Uh, so you're training, and you, yeah, a couple of times did I did you go, have to go, I, go in. A couple of times I did go in and just g give evidence or whatever, and then um, about the end of the season, and, I, and the thing that the shittest thing was, I couldn't I couldn't play um, representative football. For the Super League, because I, I got picked for the nines, for the Australian, because the first before the season they had the nines tournament, and I got picked for Australia, play for Australia. I couldn't play because of this court battle. Because of the court battle. Yeah, man, I was beyond because I, I saw my one of my major goals was to play for my country, um, at a higher level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So up in Brisbane, coached by Wayne Bennett, and yeah. like I've seen that team yeah. that you oh, the that team you played. Was like, crazy, bro. It's the almost team. not fair. <laughs> like, let's be honest. We, if you go through those that yeah. that seventeen, we, that, we won everything, bro. We won everything. Mate, we won. I'm not surprised. <laughs> like, really, like with the yeah the team, we had a crazy team, man. We had like Gordon Tallis, um, we had Wendell Sellers on the wing, Alfie, uh, uh, Kebby Waters, um, who else we have? We had like Webke, Storm, we had some beast players, bro. And um, but I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was like uh, a team of the stars, you know what I mean? So, uh, but they're all legend blokes. Like I got, you know, especially Alfie's a crack up, bro. <laughs> he, he was t he was calling plays on the field that wasn't even plays. They're just trying to just g up, yeah. just jing up. And I went off. Well, what's going on here? You know, I was, it, was, it was making me <laughs> just to like just to g just, me up, just a bit of it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but. Freaking me out. Him and I met Kevy. Oh, they're funny boys. After that, the Broncos victory, the Lee, the there's a there's peace between the Super League and yeah, the well, I come, uh, well, I went to court all year and then the the rule the court rule I had to go back to the ARL. And so Oh really? Yeah, they could. But then luckily the competition come back to to one 
um, won competition again. And and it was lucky for me because I'll, I'll become a free agent again. Ah. You know what I mean? Oh, right, because re- – so, yeah, the comp comes back together, but you're technically a free agent. You're I'm not fr- necessarily yeah. – because Bron- really you'd signed a long signed deal the, at the I Broncos. Signed, I three-year deal. Three-year deal with the Broncos. And um, I was getting paid crazy, mad money. Like for, for, for today's terms, it was like 1.2, 1.3 million, easy. You know what I mean? And um, – for three years and 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 then um I become a free agent again. When I come, so you're back on the open. Uh, I'm back, back on, on the open, open, you, open market. Then I, I I sign the the biggest deal in one of St George's history at the time. Was it always the Dragons you wanted? Because that's where you started. It was it. No, nah, it wasn't just the Dragon. Like I said, I I said a comment at the time. Like the movie just came out. Um, what's that movie? Um, where he says, "Show me the money." Oh, um, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Yeah, yeah. The, Jerry, oh, Maguire, the, Jerry Maguire the, just came out and I said, show me the money, baby. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Like, we ain't in this for a long time, man. Like, you have to take care of yourself. You got to set yourself up. You know what I mean? I was I was a young man and at that time I was what? Jada was about to be born, my daughter. And I was looking to set myself up. And I, you know, I was you know, I wanted to get pay for my skills. So I knew I was one of the, the, the baddest boys out there, so... You know, I, mean, I, I want to get, I want to get that um, revenue. Yeah. So the dragons bring you in on it. Well, I told them who show me, who's going to show me the money, and then did you get? I'm assuming I got a couple as offers a free, as a free agent. You, there'd be offers coming from yeah, everywhere. I got offers from pretty much everywhere, but um, obviously, drag. I'm a dragons junior from from under 15s, which was Harold Matts, 17s and 19s to Jersey flag, um, Jersey flag. Uh, then what SG Ball before that we won the SG Ball at you know beat Canterbury twenty nil, we won that that seat that year, but um, yeah I was a Dragons yeah. junior and that's you know that's where I sort of built my foundation as a football player and um, you know I wanted to give them, you know right away first right away if they, you know I got matched I think um I think at the time it was six hundred thousand, um in nineteen ninety eight. Six hundred grand in ninety eight. Yeah, it'd be a bit big, maybe one point five or something like today. It'd be big. Well, ninety eight. I think usually it like doubles every ten years, so yeah. it'd be like six hundred. Then ninety eight in two thousand and eight would be one point. You might you're looking at about two yeah, over two bro. mil in bro, today's I money. was a man, I was the base cast. Like I don't think you understand. Are you probably, I remember watching you. Yeah, I was a bad boy, bro. I, I should have been on Puff Daddy's team because I was a bad boy. You know what I mean, like I was, I was an animal, man. Yeah. Like sometimes I think to myself now, and I was wild. I think I was well. I wasn't just the one of the best players. I was wild in the sense that I believed it, and I believed that I was, and not just that. There was, cause the hype was real. You know what I mean? You get a lot of people that got hype around them, but you want to see if it's real, and a lot. A lot ain't real, but I was real. You lived yeah. up to the price tag. I lived tag. up to the right price tag. And at, 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 a, at the age of 20, when when, was when I started, I wasn't get, I, I didn't feel I was getting the right recognition. You know what I mean? Like, and the way I came in and from, from the juniors and, and being touted one of the best to, to come to do it. You know, I was Tony Mundine's son, yeah, but um, I was my own man as far as, Know, how I held myself and and, and sp- and spoke spoke and they see I was very outlandish and v- vocal on certain fronts so they wouldn't give me the recognition if I was a white boy coming out and doing what I was doing I'd be straight be straight in the New South Wales team straight in the Australian team that's how it is you know what I mean and but you got you black you got to show that's why Greg Guinness went to Queensland to play Cause he didn't feel like they were, they were giving him runs, and I was saying that shit when I was, when I was playing. You know what I mean? I didn't. They, I said, "Wait, Dave Peachy, Preston Campbell, Dalian Player of the Year didn't get picked. Nathan Blacklock, you know, three times leading try scorer didn't even get picked. I only just got picked because they had to pick me. There was no choice. But they left me at number seventeen. That was the last player to be picked, and played me on a inter- interchange bench. You know, played me hooker. You know, in the backs, fullback, centre, whatever. But I never got the real go, you know. What I mean, I was still and I was still scoring tries, still turning up, you know what I mean. But um, 
the, so I come out in, when I was 20 years old to Danny Wadlam. I think you had him on here. Mm. Danny Wadlam, I told him, I said, bro, you, you want a story? He goes, he goes well, what's the story? I said, Laurie Daly's running on old legs. <laughs> and he goes, what? You want to write that? I said, what do you mean? I'm saying it. You know what I mean? And he's going, yeah, you serious? I said, yeah, 100% I'm serious. I wanted, to, I wanted to build rivalries. I wanted to build, um, what do you call it, combatants. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that, 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 personal that, rivalries. Where personal rivalries. You know what I mean? Bring eyeballs bring, to the bring, sport. Yeah, not just that, but bring the best out of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, he, was, he, was, he was the main man at the time. He was only 26, mind you, but I was only 20. And <laughs> <laughs> I said he was running on old legs. So when I got 26, I said, this ain't even old. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. and, my, and, my, and then my dad So I come out in the papers and that right He was working for the, to the uh, Herald So I come out in the papers and fucking back page whatever And my dad what's on What are you doing mate You can't say that I said what do you mean I just said it You know what I mean and He goes Retract that comment Don't, don't, <laughs> don't be You can't be um, putting Laurie like, down like that I said dad I'm not putting him down I'm just letting him know I'm the, ma I'm the man I'm the Mac Let's go You want to go Let's go you know what I mean? And you know, all right then. And left it at that. Mm. So every time I played Fitler, every time I played Daily, it was on. It was like a world heavyweight championship fight. Yeah, they you knew it, I knew it. They knew it, I knew it. Personal battle. Bruh, you know when you know from the kickoff, you know as a front rower. You you get a fullback or a or a half would catch the ball, pass to the pass to the to the front rower to come back and hit the first, have the first hit up. They'd catch it. If I'm on the same time, they catch it. They, they won't even look at him. They just come, come straight, run straight at me and try and bump me. Oh, really? And, yeah. They knew, the that, they knew off the kickoff. They knew it was on. And I was you know, hit him as hard as I can all day, brother. Did, did that I mean, bring out the best in you? Yeah, best, run out the best in me, man. Run out the best in me. And I, and I swear to God, I would do anything to, 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 you know, beat them. You know, for my team to beat their team and me to, me to outplay them. And that's what happened year in. Year out, year in, year out. Not not one year, not two years, not three years, not four years, <laughs> not five years. It's five and a half years. They never beat me, and I pump them every time. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mate, as a, I'm just trying to think what it'd be like sat in the change room next year. Did you did you get the sense that like you inspired your teammates? A hundred percent, hundred percent. Because. I'm trying to think like of some of those, some of those players I played with and looked across and gone, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, bro. Like I had this, I had that super confidence in the change rooms, and it, did that like, like rub I'll, off I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. '96, we had a team, not so crash hot. We probably placed about tenth in the in the competition out of say twenty teams. Halfway, bruh. I started. That's when I started really coming of age from '96, and I, and I started developing my body. Started to get stronger. Started my skills started to pick up with my my speed and things like that. And um, if you watch the '96 finals, all you might watch the '96 finals. We played Canberra the first game. That team full of internationals. We only had one international in our team, or one or two. Like a back row and a, and Mark Quinn the center, and and the other team had like ten, eleven, like New Zealand internationals, Australian internationals, English internationals. You know what I mean? Beat beat, beat Canberra fourteen, sixteen. We 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 beat them. And I do the. You remember the mouse trap? I done a mouse yes, trap. Yes, yeah, yeah. The the dummy, the, the, dummy, the two, dummy, dummy, yeah. two dummy halves. Yeah, 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 done, yeah, a yeah, yeah. done a mouse trap. Done a with Nathan Brown. I was uh, uh, Jimmy and I stepped and I drew drew um. The center in, we scored in the corner, we win the game. Then we played the Roosters, Fitler, and his team full of internationals. Pump them again, pump them again. I told you, not this not this not one year, this not two years, not three, not four, not four, five and a half years. I pump these guys. Do you, so, do you know? You, do you think you don't get enough credibility for, for having that? Not, I'm not talking about your playing, your ability, but your ability to inspire a team. So, there's been a number of players over the years. Um, recently that, you know, would get credited for. It's a bit of a one-man show. I'm thinking um, of a, you know, 
So, for, for example, Jared Hayne in 08. Mm. Like, it was like the Jared Hayne show. Yeah. Like, do you... And and his ability... Forget what well, he's... No. Well, what he's do, do, done after football, but his ability that year, like, inspired the team and, yeah, and made know. players play but better because if you look at, of... If you, look, if you look at 96 year with Anthony Mundine... It was like a one man, one man, one man band that the teammates just mm. rode the cocktails of that. I'm telling you, bro. Like my my energy, my confidence, just not confidence, supreme fucking confidence, supreme belief that I brought him. I brought him to that level with me. Mm. A young Jason Stevens, like I was told him, he was a bit thing before the game in the semi final. Before um, I don't know, I can't remember who we were playing. I said, Jace, you're one of the fucking best. What are you? What are you? Talk, what are you doing, mate? Don't be fucking. You know, be, I don't know if he wasn't scared, he was just a bit, um, he was a bit like anxious. I said, don't be fucking anxious, you're the fucking one of the best, one of the best ball, ball playing front play, players I've played with. You're a beast, bro, what are you, what are you talking about? And I jumped, pumped him up and he played awesome that day. Mm. You know, I think he's heard, he heard his, um, heard his, his hand, but, but he yeah, was yeah. playing good at the time. And um, yeah, this stuff like that, like, I, I really, I know that I uplifted my teammates 100%. Yeah, yeah, but you did. It's crazy. I don't think enough people realize the importance. Like, yeah, you were on a lot of money, and I've I always look at it that as a, um, <clears throat> you know the, when you play when you pay someone a bit big money, they've got to have the ability to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like even in in today's game, yeah. when you've got like the million dollar price tag, it's yeah. more than what you do on the field. You've got to be that teammate that is will that has the ability to get a I player think. that's just a bit average yeah. with all due respect but get them to play above themselves that's where the real top end stars are where yeah. uh, have so much value yeah yeah um mate you mentioned there about some of the issues with um not getting what perhaps you deserved oh no way there's no and that's even today they still do it they still do it today bro listen check a Australian athlete, no, no, not Australia. Check a world athlete, world athlete that's got my resume as far as team sport to an individual sport and dominated both sports, or, do, or become dominated both sports at his peak. You have Bo Jackson, you have Deion Sanders that's went from NRL to, I mean, to, to I mean, what do they call it? Um, gridiron to yeah. uh, NFL to baseball or whatever but from coming from a team sport like a rugby league like jared hayne that you know he i thought he'd done crazy good going to to america and you know trying to chase his dream to mm. become an nfl player and i think i think you've done good but from me going to from from rugby league being i was bro, i was one of the best if not the best i was argue, i can be arguably the best at the time in the 90s um, as a 5'8", the best. That's why I call these um, fitlers and dailies out. I mean, I respect them so much because they brought the best out of me. You know mm. what I mean? They're good men. I, you know, I respect them, but I just yeah. believe and knew I was better than them. You know what I mean? And and the scoreboard says I am in every way, in every department, as far as game-wise. You know what I mean? Hmm. To, you, you stand by that. You, you didn't get what you deserved. I never got what I deserved. Even today, like and what you sorry, and what what you earned. Yeah, you earned you earned those things. A hundred percent, you earned them. You know I mean, I was, bro. I had the I had the trifecta. All right, I was Aboriginal, I was a Muslim, and I was, and I was outspoken. They're free things. You know, you know, you're not supposed to be. You know what I mean. That's why black fellas are like, oh, shame job. You know what I mean? Oh, they're real shy and timid because they're mentally, systematically broken to that level. Where they, they're they not supposed to say anything. You fucking sit in the corner, say the fucking nothing. You're like, yes, sir, no, sir. Fuck, bro. I, I was a, I'm a different beast. God made me a different way, gave me that resilience, gave me that. No matter what they threw at me, it's like water off a duck's back. Back to those days when you were a footballer. Did you ever think about compromising and just going? No, no, no. Didn't even enter not your head. Didn't one even bit. enter my head, bro. Did not even enter my head. Like I'm not gonna, 
Now listen, do you want me to tell you how good I was? I want, I want, this, I want you fellas to get in perspective how good I was. I'm going to tell you a story. You're going to freak out. Everyone's going to freak out. It's going to blow your mind. You ready? Cool. Okay. Well, I've done what I've done. All I could do within the what? I've dated in, 90, say, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So 2000, six and a half years. I was in NRL, uh, footy, right? Done all I could. Announced my retirement. Go on a boxing. Going to be world champ. Go, go over to Germany, get beat by Aitke, where afterwards Aitke said I was the hardest fight he's ever fought, the best jab, the best defence, the best this, the best that, and everything else. So if my peers saying that, Aitke saying he's, I'm the best fight he's ever fought, I, I'm only had 10 fights, I've never even had no amateur background. Like, I must be, I'm a bad boy, you know what I mean? We know I'm a bad boy, but anyway. Um, I go on to win the world title against, Silver, against um, Antoine Eccles, you know, shout out to his family and loved ones. My condolences go to you guys. You just passed away recently, the poor, poor, poor brother. Um, so blessings to him. May he rest in peace. Um, I want. Then I wanted to go. I said, I want my world. That was my monkey on my back. That's all I wanted to do. All I wanted to achieve. No matter what what happened after that moment. No matter what happened after that moment. Being into one Eccles, I'll become world champion. I've done what I said I want to do. That monkey was off my back. The monkey was gone. What are you going to do now, Chuck? Well, I'm doing pretty good in Boston. Let's keep going. So I'll box boxing again. I'll get another world title shot. I'll become number one again against Mikel Kessler, who was a beast, one of the best in the division at the time. 28 no, um, Emmett Peg crazy Emmett Peg pedigree from Denmark. He was a beast. He was in the Super Six. He, he fought them fought all. Into uh, Andre Ward, Joe Kawasaki. Anyway, um, I fight him. It was a close fight. Could have went either way. You know what I mean? Um, I thought it would have been. I thought it was a draw. But um, anyway, they give the the fight the majority decision to him. But it was very very close. After that fight, so a lot of people thought, "Fuck, you don't need to prove nothing else, Chuck. Like you've done. You've become champion." You know what I mean? Twice, you've, already, you've already become tw two-time champion, which you won, I won the WA Super Middleweight again. Um, then you fought, you're going for your third title against um, Kessler. You don't, need to, you don't need to prove anything else. So I'll have a meeting with this certain gentleman. I'm going to tell you his name in a minute. He brought me in. We, we, we met. This is like five, five and a half years after I finished footy. I'm in the boxing. All right? You ready for this? Okay, so um, he he, told, he says to me, "How do you how 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 would you how do you would you feel to play fly half for Australia in the next World Cup?" Rugby Union. That's what I'm saying. And I said, "Excuse me." I said, "How would you feel if you come to Rugby Union?" And play fly half for Australia in the next World Cup. This is five years after I finished footy. I said, "Well, sounds good. Sounds good. That's definitely something to think about." So I had a meeting with Eddie Jones, and he wanted me to, you know, put boxing on hold, come to Union. That was that was in two oh five. So I think the, I'm not sure if the the World Cup was in two oh six or two oh seven. I think it was maybe two oh seven. Oh yeah. seven. So one of oh, me that was the the when the Johnny Wilkinson dropped yes, goal here. Yes, 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 in Australia. Yes. It was the home World Cup yes. for us. The one after. The one after. Yeah. Oh, it was the one after. one after. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, so basically, this is your the coach of the Australian national team sitting down and have a meet with me. After seeing what I've done in my football career, seeing what I've done in my boxing career, and saying, Fuck, this, we can get this boat to play, play, come play a five out, fly off and maybe win us a World Cup. That's it. Now, if that ain't a bad boy, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? Like, so, did, were, you not, were you tempted by it? I thought about it. I thought about it. I definitely did. I thought about it long and hard for maybe three or four or five days or maybe a week. But, um, 
having that fight against um, Kessler just solidified my. I was I was starting to, to starting to um, because I, as in boxing I, I was learning on the job. I, I didn't have no pen, 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 pedigree. I was learning on the job. So as I got more experience and more experience, I was getting better and better. Where Kess, Kessler, Kessler fight showed the world and the boxing pundits that um. Fuck, he's a he's a monster. Monday he's a monster, you know. And I thought I could do continue the boxing and and go on and do 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 big things. And I and I did, you know. Yeah. And I fought again, Danny Green, um, the year after in two oh six, whipped his ass. <laughs> um, then you know, the rest was history. But but um, just to, to now looking back at it now from from a marketing perspective and. Uh, Sporting perspective, I probably should have took the time off, focused on rugby union, played the World Cup, and then come out with the boxing. Mate, it would have been quite the the slap in the face for rugby league had you gone. Yeah, there. and that's the th- that's the thing I wanted to. That's the reason I probably would have. I was I was thinking about doing it because of the what the how they treated me. They treated you. Did you did you ever have any conversations where that was confirmed? Because I'm. I'm just thinking we we sat um here yesterday actually and spoke with um why well, can't I think of who we spoke with yesterday? Well, sorry, yeah, with, with Wayne Pierce. Um and he spoke about some of the politics in rugby league and he lost out on an Australian tour mm. basically through through politics. Yeah. Of of, of the game well, of rugby Wayne, league. Wayne Pierce was my coach in the state of origin team, ninety nine. Mm. You know what I mean? So he, I know he'd know about politics and things like that. Mm. What well, do you think it's and you think it still exists? A hundred percent now. Hundred percent. I mean it's getting better. I mean New, New South Wales starting to pick the brother, but they have to, you know, with Latrell, Cody, um, Foxy, the brothers. But brother, all right. No disrespect to no one, but there was no one, no one pioneered it before me. You know what I mean? I was a one man band by my, I taking the system on by myself back in the day. They used to get brothers to speak against what I was saying, and I used to call them out too. Well, fuck, well, mm. that, that, yeah, well you know what I mean? Well, basically, you too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just, you just Jackie, Jackie. <laughs> That actually like a sellout. You know what I mean? Yeah, no one could ever accuse you of being <laughs> being a sellout. It's pretty amazing that you stayed true to who you are. But I'll, I'll always stay true to the day I die. To a day I die, man. Mm. Be real, you know. Loyalty is royalty with me, and like it's being real. Never, not trying to be be fake and someone you ain't. Hmm. I know what you mean. Just on that um, that transition from rugby league to, to boxing, like, it's a good idea, but it's a, it, like you say, it's a completely new sport. And yeah, you were that, you, you were very confident. You weren't, a, a, you weren't afraid from, you know, having those, public confrontations with, with people, putting it out there. It seemed like your attitude was suited to boxing in terms of like how to sell a fight and stuff like that. But it's a it's a different from having that idea. I want to do boxing. You've never had a you, you didn't have any amateur pedigree. No. I, I had actually I had four amateur fights or four amateur fights because what happened? When I, you know when you're playing a year in, year out, footy, footy, mm. footy, footy, footy. footy I wanted to break for footy. I was like, fuck, be a, be a sick of footy. Let me just have a year off. You know what I mean? This one, I was about 16, 15, 16. So I had a year off and I wanted to get a couple of um, exhibition. I mean, amateur fights, you know, just see how I go. And, um, but Arthur Tunsil, who was a, you know, a very um, well-known redneck that was, you know, at the, back in the day, was running the organ association, the Amir Association in Australia. And 
my dad didn't like didn't want that didn't want me to fight under him so he had a mate in new caledonia in numia and he they've started the started the, the it was called the league it's big now the league bo- boxing um they started started it and he was one of the he had something to do with it so he said oh, i can get some fights over here in numia so i went over there four times but i fought um that year you know what i mean it was deadly but they beat french i didn't know what they were saying <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, you'd be talking smack uh, back to them. I was like, we, 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 we. And then, um, yeah, so I went over there four, four times and I won all four. And I was like, oh, man, I don't want to come back. I, might, I was thinking I might go pro, have a you know, pro. But I was just turned 17. And then come back and you had to be 18. I was like, oh, fuck, another year. I'm not going to, nah, don't worry about it. I'm just going back to footy. Then I went back to footy and I started, that's when I started playing in first grade. Mm. So, just on that move to boxing, obviously, you know, you, you spoke about being a bit of a one-man band, but inspiring your teammates. You are in there on your own. Uh-huh, like, yeah. how's the how's the headspace when you're, like, that psyche of not having anyone? I know you, I know I've spoken to a couple of fighters before, and they, they say, look, it's a, we are a team. It's a team, team effort, but, but your team can't you, help you. Yeah, there's, there's no, hey, yeah, just do us a favor. Can you just take this tough, tough carry for us? Like yeah. you know, there's no, there's no respite mm. at all in boxing. You show one moment of weakness, and you're, you know, a, a good opponent will like, exploit that and not just score a try against you, mm. but put you to sleep. Yeah, bro, that's that's the thing about boxing, like. Like you said, it's just you and your own. You have a team, obviously, but um, they can't help you. When you're in, the, when you're in them ropes, in that squared circle, you, no one can help you but yourself. So, like I said, I was just learning. On, I had four amateur fights, so I never had no pedigree of, of amateur boxing. So I was learning on the job. Basically. It's a dangerous job to land on. It's a learn, but, but like, you, do, you know what I'm saying? I knew, like, I knew I had the ability. I knew I had the ability. I knew I had the talent, but I just, I just lacked the experience. And that's why I lost to Odki because of the experience. So when I come back to be his number one for him to fight me again, he done the he done the right thing and retired, and and the, the vacant become title. What was there a, was, the title become vacant? Yeah, and I fought Eccles for it. What, was there any? Was there ever any moment of like self doubt where you're no like, moment. you know, okay, this is it, and I'm like, oh. No, no moment for self doubt because your preparation gets you in the like supreme confidence going into the fight. Your preparation. Mm. So if my preparation was on, I thought, you know, on my day I can beat anybody. Just a mindset of mindset that I'm the man. That's it. I'm the man. No one can fuck with me. No chink in the armor. No chink in the armor. I'm a bad, I'm, I'm a monster. You know what I mean? And I, at my best, no one beats me, you know. That's how I was thinking. But I, did, I still was lacking the experience, you know. Like, yeah. you're talking about, like, Danny Green and all these. They have, like, 100, 200 amateur fights and Olympic to- Olympic titles, Commonwealth Games, things like that. I never had none of that, bro. Well, I'm, I, I, was, I was the best football player in the world. Yeah. But do you think, you know you fo- like, do you think your, your football and experience – Helped you a little bit, like I think my football, like your your foot, because nat, you natural footwork, yeah. natural evasion skills, yeah. like that helps you in the boxing. Yeah, I well, a little bit. But. Does, it does, and definitely, I thought I thought my size and my strength, because in footy at St George back in the day when I was in my prime, like pound for pound, I was the strongest in the club. I was squatting two twenty kilos, and I put like max three reps. I was a I was a monster, bro. Like I was benching 140, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was a, that's, I was crazy, weight, man. Yeah. And pound for pound, kilo for kilo, I was the best. But, but even then, like, in your preparation with, like, like, how, how do you go, like, cutting weight? If you've, because yeah. a lot of amateurs, the, a lot of amateurs, that's, like, they've, they become accustomed to that. Like, to go into a professional fight, how, how, how much nah. weight did you have to cut that? Can you remember that first weight cut? Yeah, it was pretty, pretty off. But I was, I was playing footy around 85, 86 kilos, and I'm coming. My first fight was as uh, 76 kilos, so the weight cut was 10, 10 kilos, and it was. And you're of, not a big man, like that's not like me cutting 10. That's yeah. a big cut, like that. That's. 
It's a big That's chunk. about 15% that, of your body weight? 100%, bro. 100%. That's what sort of was my um, was my derailing, you know, later on in my career. As you got older, it was hard to cut weight. And I, I was agreeing to terms that I shouldn't agree to. Oh, and fighting down yeah. to – I was just dumb. I wasn't smart. I was dumb. But, but um, yeah, you live and you learn, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you spoke about some of the politics – of rugby league, I, and I, I agree with you. I think there are a lot of politics involved, but for me, there's no greater sport with more politics than sorry, um, than than boxing. Yeah, I definitely boxing. Always, I just saw, a, um, you know, all fights you're gonna, you're always gonna have, you know, different different sp- judges judge different fights different ways. You know what I mean? And I, I, I feel like. It never, never does 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 it justice the sport. You know what I'm saying? And there's always going to be there's going to be always bad calls or b- bad um, decisions made. Um, but I suppose that's what what you got to fight through fight through that adversity in order to try and be the, be the champion that every young aspiring boxer wants to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Did, did did you find that difficult, or nah, you were already my mindset was like I'm going to be champion. I don't give up. Well, well, who says I ain't? Watch me. And on the way back after losing that fight, I was like, oh. well, I was deflated. I was, I was devastated. I didn't know what to. I didn't know whether I was going to go on. I was nearly broken at that point. And it was a long flight back. I was we went to Greece, went to um, Macedonia, then back to got got home. And by the time I got home, I, I re, I got myself together and I said. You ain't going nowhere, boy. Your job ain't done. And um, a year and a half later, I become the WBA Super Middleweight Champion of the World. And like I said, that monkey was off my back. And no matter what I'd done from that point, they could never, ever, ever take that away from me. What's it like when you win that world title? Oh, mate, it was, it was you, talk, you know that, you're talking about that feeling, you can never get it again. Something like that, bro. Like, that'll be hard to get. That'll be hard to get. You know what I mean? Mm. Crazy. We like I'm just thinking like it gets just emotional thinking about like things like that. Yeah. That, is that your is that your proudest moment, you think? Yeah, well, In, on the sport. One of the, one of one of the biggest moments. I said, like I said, bro, they talk about the best athletes in Australia. Like to you to, I'm telling you to you, to the people listening. Mundane's number one. Daylight second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, daylight number two, maybe Don Brabin number three, or whoever you want to put after that. Monday's number one. There's no, there's no one me than daylight. That's it. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. There's me than daylight. Fair enough. If you if you check my resumes, have a look at my what runs I got on board. See if an athlete, not just in Australia but worldwide, done what I've done from two sports crossovers. I'm the best crossover sport in the history of sports. Not this time, not that time, but of all time. Well, I don't think there's much. There's much arguing around that. You can't, you like, can't, you can't argue it. There's no argument. Because there's no other. There's it. no one else. There's no one else, bro. And I could have been a basketball player too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad boy, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mate, you, you know when, obviously, the, the, you, you're being yourself here, and they say like styles make fights, yeah. which they which they do, but they need to be sold. You must have just been the market is um, marketing dream oh, badly, for the people badly. for the I mean, people involved in in, in, right, in bro, boxing. I, I, like I, you I, are I, bringing more eyeballs. Like people say, you're polarizing. Like, bro, did, listen. did you have to? Did you have to switch into that? I'm going to be this nah, person. I was, I was always like that. I was I was always like that as a kid. So it was just I was just you natural. Just, just me being me. Just me being me. Just did one, I ever distract? one of my cousins or one of my friends. When trying to beat me in handball or marbles or whatever that we play back in the day, I'll stay there. To, I'll keep it there till dust until I beat you. But mate, there's a difference between playing handball and marbles, between heavy between professional boxing. When yeah. The, when yeah, but that, we talk speak but about that danger, far, but but it's, it's different. But it's the mentality. Is yeah, the, same. the mentality. But you know, if you lose a game of marbles, you go home with your tail between you. Like, oh, I lost that game, whatever. But like I say, like. You know, you you poke that bear against a professional boxer, mm. and you get it wrong. 
could be lights out, like I've, like I've experienced with, with, with Sven Oki, um, with a few other champions. But um, it, ain't, it ain't never about to set back. It's about to come back. You know what I mean? And I come back with a vengeance, mm. man. Like I come back to, what? to get what's mine and I got it. I speak about this quite a lot, about like and, and think about it like post traumatic benefit from when you get knocked out mm. or you go through adversity and how how much stronger it makes. Is that how you approach the well, like being look, knocked out? Well, I got knocked out against Van Otke, but if you if you look up Vince Van Otke on the Ring magazine interview recently, uh, probably last year or a year or two ago, and he's got ten categories like who, the best feet. The best jab, the best defense, the best this, the best that. Seven of them, seven of them is my, me. And he says, "Who's the hardest fighter you ever fought, Mundine?" You were his toughest fight. Toughest fight ever. You know what I mean? This come from my peer that I was mm. in the ring with, and this, this I was I was only ten fights in in my career. You know what I mean? Like that's giving me the ultimate compliment. There, you know what I'm saying? Do you ever wish you took up boxing earlier? Well, that's just that's just, you know I mean? that's that's the sliding doors moment. If I was a boxer from the get go, from the get go, I would have been a I wouldn't have been three time world champ. I would have put him in like many Pacquiao eight time world champ or something. I'm, I was a I'm, I'm was I'm a different beast cast. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm just you I'm built that? different. Not, not going into boxing. Well, that's early. that's the sliding doors moment where what if what if yeah. I stayed in rugby league? You know what I mean? If I stayed in rugby league, I, I would have got. I would have got premierships. More, I played in three, or technically four, because I was on the bench for the St George '93. But I would have got more premierships. I would, have, I would, have, I would have. I left. I left before my prime. I was only 25 yeah. years old. I probably would have been an immortal. I swear to God, <laughs> I'm a bad boy, mate. I'm a bad boy. Mm. But back to that that boxing, and and, and the build off. Did the did the promoters ever need to poke you? Because obviously when you're the, – the more people that buy the fight, buy a pay-per-view event, the nah. more money you get. Was that ever on your mind in, nah, in to promote? And nah. did, it, was, did, it ever dis, did, did it ever distract you and you just think, I just want to go train? No. Nah. I, I had the personality, the charisma, the flamboyance, the explosive the, – I was an explosive, flamboyant, charismatic – Pretty, handsome, most polarizing. Um, did you play that? Did you like that tag of being polarizing? Like, like I people looked to hate, you. You either loved or hate. There's no, I, there's no one the fence. To be honest, when I, you speak to people about yourself, there's no, there's no one like, ah, oh, Mundine, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know but what I mean? I, like, you, you know get what? some people like that, and they're like, oh yeah, he's alright. I, like, I just, I just love, just, I love my fans, and I don't give a shit about that anyone else. I love but, my fans. I don't you, give a shit about them. What the, what they were a bit of a necessary evil, weren't they? Because you need. Those I needed people, that because like, they they drove they fueled my they fueled my uh, motivation. They fueled my dreams and desires to achieve what in order what I wanted to achieve out, out of it, and I proved them wrong. The power, the, like the power of hate, is is yeah, strong. Is, is strong. Very very. Like strong. when people hate, yeah, yeah. or dislike, yeah, yeah. But, it drives you to do. It, it, but you know what. Like, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something now that I do on my my mindset talk. Um, I grew up well, as a what twelve year old when I was I was twelve when I was in the 87, 88, 89. Now I, I was a big fan of cricket. Back, I don't watch cricket today, but I was a big fan of cricket back then because who was the biggest in the eighties? The the Indies, the West Indies. Oh, the way. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they had like Blaine Lara and all that. No, no. Be uh, or before, before then, Courtney Ambrose, Gus Logie, uh, C C C Courtney Walsh, Viv Richards. Like I loved them, right? And I played cricket from twelve to fifteen. I played cricket. I was a beast. I'm, 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 I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I went to I went to cricket cricket game at SCG and one and I. You know, when you're little, when you're about twelve years old, they give you these little bats when you're a kid. You know what I mean? Little little sort of souvenir bats. And I want to get it signed by a few players. And I, Viv Richard was my favorite player. I, was like, I love Viv, man. He's a, he's the man. He's like the 
He's a he's a, he can jack like he was all rounder. Waiting for him, waiting for him. Then I see him. He's talking to these du- two Dubais, two, two du- Dubais girls, right? And, and, and Aboriginal girls talking to these dubs. And I was like, oh, fuck. I don't want to. So I was still waiting, wait. I said, I've got to go because I have to, have, to, have to jet. So I said, I'll go to him. So I went up to him. I said, Brah, can you sign this for me, please? You know? And he looked at me. Can't you see I'm busy? Like that. <laughs> like that. You know, real arrogant. And I was like, I said, well, what, under my mouth, I was like, well, fuck you then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and then, I, then I sort of walked off, deflated, you know? I was like, from that moment, I um I said to myself, because I knew I was going to make it one day. I knew. I just had this premonition from a young boy that I was going to be the man. But anyway, I um, walking away from that, I, I said to myself, I'm never going to make someone feel the way Viv made me feel. That's why I've always don't judge a book by its cover. Meet me first. Speak to me first. Engage with me. Have a yarn to me. Then, then, then judge me. But all this, all this talk, all this build up and hype and this and that. Sometimes it's fun and games. But you do you do build rivalries. You do does get get serious. You know, at the time I didn't like Danny Green. He didn't like me. We didn't see eye to eye. He thought he was better than me. I thought I was better than him. And was it a racial thing? Yeah, it was a racial thing because they made it a racial thing. That's why the fight was so big. But it didn't matter because I won. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that there's there's a different side to to people, isn't there? Than the, oh, yeah, the public 100%. persona. You know, like you said there about sit down. I I, I agree with that. I couldn't agree. With, I couldn't agree with you more 100%. about. Not maybe, maybe, maybe some people that watch a new play. Oh, they, for, 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 he's a grab this bloke. Yeah, you know oh, I mean? like, 100%. You like, know what I'm saying? Like, my, my w- wife and um, parents have like sat in the stands and said, like, That's what I'm oh, saying. Like, you know, I'm a miss- like, my missus wouldn't react, but my mum sometimes would be like, What are you saying? And it's like, I, I don't care. Well, that's, like, what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It, it is what well, it is. I didn't care, right? Mm. I'll tell you one story at, at, um, at Gosford Stadium. We played, I don't know, we were playing, I think we were playing Manly or something. And, um, this bloke, I was playing, you know, I'm talking, and I, no, I'm, because I'm very, I was a very, I, I was a personality within sport, not just rugby league, but everything. And he goes, Monday, you, you know, and, I, and, and, my, and my dad followed him to the toilets. And, he, and when he went to the he went to a piece, my dad hit him up the ribs <laughs> and dropped him, you know what I mean? <laughs> Good. Uh, so, but it went to court and they threw it out, whatever. But it just goes to show, like, they don't know, people don't know you, bro. Like, no. You know what I mean? It's, it's sad. You know what I mean? Like, they just know you through the media, you know? Mm. And they can they can portray you however they want to portray you. And for me, because I was so against the system and fighting for other things, other justices, mm. um, they've always made me um, be or feel. Um, like the bad, the bad boy, the bad, no, the bad guy. Mm. I think it, it always interests me that like how fans will like if they're on your team, you yeah. love them, oh, but yeah. if they're in the opposite, oh, he's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. They, but and yours go into bat for <laughs> like I do it the same. Like if I support a team uh, and a player does something wrong, oh, but you know, like. You make make excuses yeah, make sure, for yeah, them, yeah, and you yeah, justify yeah. it. But then, if it's the opposition, oh, he's always been like that. <laughs> like <laughs> that fucking, you know. It, uh, it, I guess it's that fun. But, 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 but that's the beauty of sport, man. Mm. Like, um, brings out all emotions, and people, people, some people can control them, some people can't. Mm. So, have you ever had any um, like reactions, like interactions with people, and it's no. been like, whoa, you've gone a bit too far, like. Do you know what I mean? Like in the street, because you're no. getting around. Like you, do, do people. Really. What, what, what I, are people I, like when they come up to you? Pretty... I spread, I spread love. I mean, I'm, I reckon some of the biggest haters have met me and fell in love with me. Mm. You know what I mean, genuinely fell in love with me because they feel my energy, they feel my kindness, they feel my my love, and like my down to earth um, um, personality, man. Well, like I'm real. You know what I mean? And you feel that when you meet me. So. Then you'll judge me. Come see me, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to go? We can go. Yeah. I, I I reckon you're right there. I've had that 
where people meet you and they're like, yeah. oh. Yeah, bro. They're like, like just, they're like, I didn't think it was like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, thought, I, was think, I was expecting something else, you know what I mean? Mm. But, you know, it is what it is, man. I just, like I said, I treat people, you know, with with how they treat me. They want to treat, be treated with love and respect. I treat you with love and respect. Mm. No problem. Yeah. If it's fuck me, then it's fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think, that's, I think that's fair enough. Fair enough, bro. You know what I mean? We're going to take a quick break from the podcast to tell you about AG1, the daily foundational nutritional drink with all your needs in the one place. I like to look after my health and AG1 takes care of that for me. No more tablets, vitamin pills, vitamin pills, all the health nutrition I need all in the one place. Every single morning, it's as easy. Open up the fridge scoop of AG1 in a glass, cold water, stir it with a fork, drink it. It tastes great and it helps me know. It gives me the peace of mind that all my nutritional needs are taken care of all in the one drink. It really is as simple as that. And also anybody that knows anything about health benefits knows that it comes with adding simple routines to your day. It's not about magic pills. They're not going to work. AG1 helps me be the best version of myself by having this new habit of every single morning having that drink. I know my nutritional bases are covered thanks to AG1. A lot of athletes are now taking AG1 and with 75 high quality ingredients, it's no wonder why. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. Hey, back to your, your, your boxing career and talking about that, like that persona, that selling the fight. Mm. What was your most memorable build up? Because you've had a few big ones, like I reckon the biggest one, probably one of the biggest was um, Denny Green. Denny Green was the, the massive. fit because only because of the race card. I think they put the race card. But did you that, enjoy, that, so that, did you enjoy that? Because or, or because not? I was the I was the the brown boy that um that talked shit that 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 did shit and was the was the best at doing it. You know what I mean and. They wanted the great white hope, hype, the great white hype, or hope, to, to for me, to, for them, for him to knock me off my my perch and shut my mouth. That was basically it. Did you enjoy that? Though? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I went back to my roots up in Bogle, where my dad's from, in the mission, little Aboriginal mission up near uh, forty five minutes from Grafton inland, and went back, trained there for a month, bro. I was there for a month, training in the winter. And and you know, got the got the all my sort of ancestral energy, and, and that was like your fuel. Yeah, my fuel to 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 really um, put on a show. You know what I mean? And I ask God to protect me and and make me victorious. And Alhamdulillah, you know, that was done it done it with in style as well. Yeah, and that. Yeah, that's that's a good good memory to have when you when it's when it's built up like that. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, they were having brawls all over the country after that fight. You know what I mean? Because of the the emotions that was brought to it, brought to it. You know, when you're meeting like the face off and some of the yeah. press conferences as the fight's getting closer, are you under like strict instruction? No, nah, not to nah, do nah. it. Not well. You can't. Well, what's the consequences if it, if you throw down in that? I, uh, oh, you probably, I've always wondered about that. Like, why probably, some press conferences or face offs? You probably can get banned, or, or the fight may not go ahead. You put a fight fight in jeopardy. Um, things like that. Your purse, you might lose a lot of your purse. Oh, so if you, if, yeah, like you yeah, get fined and stuff. Right. So you've got. So you're going into that. You're about. Because I always find this fascinating. These two people are about to go into a boxing ring in a couple of days or weeks' time. Clearly dislike each other. Go yeah. as far to say it's hate each other. But you're there standing, facing off, like yeah. inches away from one another. Yeah. Like, 
how hard is it to control yourself well, not to go like I will just do it now yeah now was a lot of some fighters do take swings or taking swings before um but I wasn't that type of cat like I'm, you know but I'm, I'm always wary of it I'm always ready to, to step back or move you know what I mean but like for, w were you ever thinking I'll just go nah, nah, never I'd never you always had that like oh well, may, uh, maybe mm. one S uh, Sam Solomon uh, I just didn't like him <laughs> he's just a boxing prostitute and uh, he really got in my under my skin and I fought I fought him three times and I pumped him three times but that's but it's not, it wasn't that it was just the way he was you know, like I was coming through he, he went and sparred Van Oetke. I was coming through, went and sparred Michael, uh, Mikel Kester, Smeni Siaka. All the, you know, just trying to just, the hate was real in the sense that I, that I was the man, I was the Mac, I was the personality, I was the, had got the most media attention. Same with, you know, with Jeff Fennick and Team Fennick. I pumped, then I pumped all them when I got the experience. You know what I mean? Ian McLeod. But, but this guy got on the, like in your head. He got, him, he got it on my skin and I, I felt like cracking him. You know what I mean? But you know, I knew that, you know, if I cracked him, I, he probably wouldn't wake up. So I the fight's I, over. <laughs> the fight's over. What, what about uh, you, you're in these press conferences, there's so much hype, all your training. How do you switch off? Can you switch off? Ah. Uh. Like, cause, cause you need your rest, right? Yeah, oh, you, like you need rest. How rest you, is a big. Yeah, how 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 would you, as a boxer, as a fighter, like I just boom, I just go like, back and relax, or have my naps, watch movies, watch whatever I want to watch, and you know what I mean, like watch Scarface or Coming to America, like old school movies. I love the old school, bro. Like I'm a nineties baby, bro. You know what I mean, like. So you just chill and just, just chill, and, ice, yeah. and you completely detach. Well, you try to detach. You try to not think about anything else. But mate, when you when, well, that's the worst. When you're trying not to think about something, yeah. what do you think about? Yeah, what you're not supposed to think about, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. Yeah, but you that didn't. No, I didn't. Didn't didn't play my play with me. Yeah. Yeah. What about um like after the fight? I know. The was it the gale one yeah. where you, you you walked out? Was I, that just so tough to face that nah, result? Nah, because the the gale, the second fight, the first fight I beat him on, on close point decision. The second fight when he was champion, and I thought I I, I didn't have to. I, bo I boxed him. I boxed his ears off that night, but they gave it to him. You know what I mean? But I was like, fuck, why am I why am I here? Like, I I, I, I sacrificed. Everything to get myself in the, my body and everything and, and do the performance I did, and then I don't get rewarded. Like, fuck, see you later, I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch that fight, I hit him two, two to one easy, easy, the whole fight. And, I, and then he gets the decision. Like, fuck. That's the, that's the, that's the politics. That's the politics of it, bro. You know what I mean? It's sad that about sports. Sad, isn't it? sad, sad, but. It's not, it's not gonna stop, man. Well, how just, can we? St how can it be stopped? Just call. Well, I think there's gonna be the judges. Got to be judges. The judge, you know what I mean? The judges got to be judges on their performances through all s sport. Yeah, a mate of mine actually. Um, I don't know if you know him, a boxer, Martin Murray. Yeah, he, no, he, Murray, he yeah. um, he fought in. Uh, I can't remember the. Was the way yeah, 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 and he fought someone over in South America for a world championship and beat him, yeah. but that he, he was never yeah. going to get there. I know that's the thing. He was bro. never going to get there. I think the judges have to be judged by a, a higher yeah. sort of hierarchy. Because um, yeah. there's some fights you go, you, judicial, you're never going to win. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. It, it, is that because oh, one of the questions I was going to ask you, like, is there anything you change about the 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 in the boxing world, if you could change one thing, yeah, that'll that, be that'll be one of them. Like the judges are getting judged, have a judicial system that that makes it fair for all parties. Mm. Um, that'll be definitely one. 
Yeah. Um, just on your boxing career, what do you think was your best fight, your best performance? Uh, green, green first fight was was beast. I thought what, I looked like Roy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> what What was the ca- catalyst for Is that just like everything that's going into it? Like yeah, sometimes um, those obviously, occasions bring out the, the, yeah, the obviously, best performances. Obviously, obviously it was, or um, was that just it was a mundane prep- performance on a special night? Nah. It ha- all that was uh, something else? Or was nah, that the occasion? It was, it was the, the occasion, the preparation. Um, I got Roy Jones Sr. in, who obviously Roy Jones Jr.'s father. And if you heard the, know the history of that, he, he trained him from a little boy. You know, I started implementing a lot of skill work with, with him and, and um, that went into the fight and um, my preparation. I, I got him actually for before Kessler. So Kessler was 205, then Johnny Green was 206. So I had that training for a while. And by that time I started to get it down pat and really defensively um, I was on. Um, offensively I was sharp. And um, there was no way he was beating me that night, man. Like it was, it was the night. Mm. Not that um, that not only him, but I reckon a lot of fighters I would have beat. But one of those fighters you you never got the opportunity to fight was with Mayweather, but I know that was on yeah, it was on, on your on, on, on your radar. Yeah, maybe we can do an exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that'd be that'd be fun. Would you have enjoyed, would you like would yeah well, I would I would have loved to I would love to I just. What happened with me, bro? Like, <clears throat> you gotta understand, as a fighter, you normally go up in weight mm. as you, you know, get older and get older. I was descending because I was a footy player. I was doing puffing up, puffing, puff, puff, hitting the weights and and do all that. I had to, my body had to take years and years to 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 chisel down to a fighter's physique. So it took maybe fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years to. For me to fall back to a, to be a fighter, but as we know, as you get older, you, you you once you drop too much weight, you lose a lot of resistance. You lose your ability to take a shot. You know what I mean? And um, I lost a couple of times going too low, like going down to super welterweight, where um, my best weight was probably super middleweight. You know what? What? What weight? Ca- what? What in kilos is that? That's yeah. sixty nine and a half. Sixty nine point eight or seven. And what are you? What were you walking around at? I was probably walking around about eighty. Yes, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's very, um, you know. And now that I got older, I went for I fought Denny Green the second time at eighty three. I didn't make 83. I made about 70, 79.5 or 6. And then... Oh, they, it was, they, a, they it was a catch weight. Was, was that a catch, catch weight? weight? He was 83. By the time of the fight, he would have been 85, 86. I was and you're weighing oh, in at 70s? Yeah. So I would have been about 80. But anyway, so anyway, I, I beat him that night, but they gave it to him, whatever. I said, this is another, another political decision. So I got offered the Jeff Horn fight, but they said... You got to fight him at 71. So I said, well, fuck, I was like, fuck it, I'm down at 71. So I, I lost from 80 kilos to 71. But then before the hour before the fight, I couldn't be more than 74. Oh, you know what I mean? So yeah, they, yeah. they really. Man, wait, how do you have any energy to fight? They weight drained me. They weight drained me to the point where I couldn't take a shot. So when he, when he hit me with that left hand, normally I take that shot easy, but I was too drained and. You know, and I was I got up, but I was just a bit too late. You know, do you think that those weight cuts? Yeah, they, they, they take they take more they out take, of you than, take more than out the knockout. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Are you worried about what it might do to you in the future? Nah, nah I'm finished now. I'm fi- no, I'm no, but I mean, like, like, because I'm I'm assuming it'd be bad for like your um yeah, your, nah, your, your nah. internal organs to drop that much nah, weight. Well, look at me now, bro. I'm sharp as the tack, babe. I'm yeah, beast, know. you know what I mean. Like, I know, but like these things can. By, like I know myself. Well, and, they haven't come back and beat yeah. me yet. You know, knock on wood. But, yeah. Um, good willing. I feel good. I feel fresh. I feel feel beautiful. Mm. And um, I just um, thank thank God for every day mm. that we, we live. You know, it's got to be grateful. I I I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. Be gratitude is is a, you know one of the key things of life. Mm. 
It is. We take so much for granted. Yeah. Um, last fight in 2021. Yeah. Uh, that's what, another you, 45, 40, 45, 40, something like that. That's like, another. That's a, I went down. I went. Went. Well, I, I fought. Um, so I fought John Wayne Parr, seventy five, which was not too bad. Seventy five is all right. I ran seventy five. Getting close to seventy six is good for me. But then I fought is a Rafa, and I fought. I beat. That's another John Wayne Parr. He's a good, good fighter. I, I hit him two to one. I thought I won that fight. But he probably thought he won, but I thought I won. It was an entertaining fight. He won the decision, just close, close, close decision. But then I fought Zarafa. I went down to 72, the middleweight. Um, walking around about 80. And then again, like the resistance was gone. Resistance was shot. I should never agree to them, them weights so late in my, my career. Yeah. If, I, if I'm 76, 77, uh, I'll beat them all. I, I still like now. I got if I was now I'm healthy. Like I'm 80, I'm probably about eighty five now, 80, 84, 85. Me healthy, I'm an animal. Like I wish I had this. Exp I wish I wish I had that. Um, I wish I had this. The 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 drive and the and the and the 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 dreams now that because the, the experience I got. Yeah. The, I wish I had this when I was young. Oh my god. That'll be in someone else, right? What was your family like when you've got these, you know, you're back of the paper? Like, I you know you said your dad rang you up. Mm. Right, I was, I, a head, I was a headline. Yeah, or like, week, every every weekend I was a headline. Every weekend. I used to tell, I used to. Did you I, give them much warning? When, when, they, you, when they picked fit, Fitler for the, for, the, for the Australian team when I was in my prime. From 96 to two, when I left, I was the best. Yeah, but in every listen in every department, statistically, I was the best. Most I was scoring tw nearly twenty tries a season for a five eight. Come on, bruh. You serious? <laughs> but like, you know what I mean, like, come on. Did Did you ever make the the call to family members and be like, just, nah, I'm just nah. letting you know, there's nah. gonna be a headline tomorrow. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> They'd always uh, call you and be like, Yeah, what exactly. The I say, what to fit like? Why pick him? I'll whip him. You know what I mean, like, why pick him? I'll whip him. And 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 then we used to go. Before we used to play each other, we used to go. I remember one time we played at the Sydney Football Stadium, and we had to me and him had to do a photo shoot together. Yeah, but he didn't say in one word to me. We we're playing at each other that weekend, and I said, "Why pick him? I whip him before before it." <laughs> so he was. I knew he was fuming. His nostrils, <laughs> his nostrils were fucking just fuming. You know what I mean? Half of a puffin. I mean, relax, mate. We're just the game's not on yet, chip. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then we play. Alhamdulillah, we alhamdulillah we get we win and I play mad and we kill it. And um, but it's just funny, funny times, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the sporting career is definitely done yeah, and dusted. Yeah, that, that, done and bro. Maybe um, a couple of exhibitions. Maybe a couple of exhibitions to have some fun, what, stay what, fit. What's, it, what's that? What does that entail? What does it? What's it's next? still a fight. It's a fight. But, but it's just not on your pro record. Not on your pro record, and you you're doing six rounds instead of twelve. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're doing you headgear or no, nah, no, nah, no headgear. If I can hurt him, I want to hurt him. Oh right, okay. So it's it. But 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 like I said to you, if I had this experience now, what I have, if I was back in my prime and I still had this the experience, all that I got now. I'll be an, another animal. I'll be the fucking ten time world champion. You know what I mean? Mm. So me, I'm more comfortable fighting now than I've ever been ever. Really? I swear to God, like I'll mix it with any of them, any of these young boys today. Any of do you, do you do you ever spar? I want to spar. I want to start sparring. I'm going to start sparring and, and having fun. Could, but not, could, not 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 not. I'm not going to go like a pro. I'm going to spar like ten, four six rounds. You know, as a pro, you. You spar 10, 12 rounds, but I'm gonna have fun, have fun, relax, f yeah. play with them. Boom, boom. I mean, some I still got to, I'm nearly, I'm nearly 50, I'm still, still, still you know, catch them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, mate. I, ugh. mate, one, one shot in the head for me, it'd be, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, you gotta hit and not be hit by it. That's the name of the game. 
<laughs> That's easy for you to say, mate. Have you seen the size of my head? <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, how how do you when when you when you face like public criticism? Yeah. How how do you deal with that? Because you face you face the fair bit of. I feel like, a bit. I, I was the mate, I was, I'm the most. I will face the most ever. How do you look at the history books? I face the most relentless um, barrage ever in the history of the media. I swear to God. Does it, does it upset? Yeah. Does it I like sw- you know what? I, I, may God strike me dead. It's like water off a duck's back. Didn't bother me one bit. Alhamdulillah, Allah's given me that um, resilience and that, yeah. that, that that strength to to carry, to to stay strong, to stay to stay you know, solid. What 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 about when you see it affect your loved ones? Yeah, that that hurts a bit. That hurts. That's a bit. where it gets you. Yeah, that hurts a bit. That's where like how. How they're not, they're how not, does Anthony the man not, Mundine, who's so it's it means nothing to you. It's all part of the game. I've got the courage to, to take it. I'll take anyone on. I'll take on the world. But when you see a loved one here, yeah, that, like that, that but how that, how does that, that make you feel? Like it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel low. But then I have to. I'm, I'm finding myself trying to get them up. You know what I mean? That becomes part of your that's job. Of, that becomes part of my job, and that's taking energy from me. Mm. That I don't need. I shouldn't have to. But like you know, when you know you, your kids are at school, or you know you, your parents, or you, my, my and then they're getting. Yeah. The, you my know, kids been through it. You know what I mean? Because that's the hard. That's I tell them. I tell them. You know, especially when I was in my prime and a lot in the media a lot. I used to tell them. You should talk to them about it. You know what I mean? Were they hard conversations to have? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. like. Yeah, that's that's the challenge, isn't it? That's yeah. that's probably the hardest part of it. Is you you're strong, yeah. You're courageous. You're so exactly. You can do something about it, yeah. But it's hard for them, yeah. Exactly, bro. Very difficult, mm. um, mate. It's not just your um, your sport and career. You do a lot of work um, on indigenous rights 100%, here in Australia. 100%. I'm all, I'm all, I stand up to any in di, like in I stand up for any um against any injustices and any wrongdoing to my people and I try always try to uplift and and um lead for my people as best I can. I used to love Malcolm X. I read his autobiography. That's what led me into Muhammad Ali. I read his autobiography and that there's a lot of things that we have similarities with on a, obviously me on a smaller scale, but the same same fight, and um, I'm I'm fighting that, I'm fighting that to the day, day to the day I die, you know. What changes or improvements? There's none. Can be can be made for. There's none. They talk about his voice. They, they don't believe in the voice. They don't believe you in. Don't? The, don't believe in the voice. It's full of shit, bro. Mm-hmm. It's a land grab. There's no. There's they, they want to take all the power. And take the power away from the sovereign people, you know what I mean? They wanna, they wanna um, basically a land grab for the new world order, and have all have all control. They wanna put the black flags in the constitution so they have nothing, um, no no power. And when we we become a part, we become a part of the of that, you know the. The white fellas and and things, so we have no power on our land. You know what I'm saying? No, no. I d- sorry. So you don't want? No, I don't want the voice. The voice is full of shit. I don't want voice. So what? What? Vote what, no. what you're gonna vote no? I'm I'm telling people to vote no. Vote no. If we if you vote the voice, then we're all fucked. Basically. So you want it to stay as it is, but what well, what can be done then? What do you mean? It's already been done. We have black um, senators within the federal federal government. We have our voice. We, we talk. This is our voice. That's all. That's just a smoke and screen mirrors to to get you to get the people to fool the people that they're doing something good, they're doing something bad. You know what I mean? You have to. You have to. They come into you like a 
like a sheep in wolf wolf's clothing. You know what I mean? Beyond the door. So you got to know what what it actually is. It, the voice is nothing. That we don't you don't need to, to bring the black into the constitution, if you know just to have a voice. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, what are they? For? Well, so what are they fighting for then? That's what I'm saying. We got more power as sovereign people of this land. This is our land. We have more power as sovereign people for as Aboriginal people. Black uh, well, not Aboriginals shouldn't mean even use Aboriginal because it's ab. It's like abstract, abnormal, it's original, original people. Um, we should keep our sovereignty. What do you mean by so you're gonna have to explain? What, what do you mean by keep your sovereignty? Keep our sovereignty as law, as law, as law, like lawful people of the land, and and um, like the first first native people, like the the indigenous people, the owners. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I, I do. I but guess I'm just trying to ask like what what can we because I'm assuming you are, are you you think society can be better oh, yeah. than oh, what yeah, it we, is we, right we, now hundred percent hundred percent it'd be better what what can be done like in terms of making society well firstly the the whole black sort of issue all the statistics ain't gotten any better morality rate life expectancy health rate diabetes, whatever you want to get, all the statistics are still the same, if not worse. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're making billions of dollars weekly or daily um, through all the recent natural resources of the land and they, they chicken feed blackfellas. I just went, I just come from Gruda Island. They have a mine there. I forgot what they mine. But they're making stack loads of money and they give the, the local traditional owners five... Five percent to endorse amongst the people, you know what I mean? Like they just need to get stronger leaders. Leaders that's gonna do do right by the, for the people and do the right things for the people. What 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 are those things? What what can be done to increase? Well, the, well you know, to er, 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 eradicate um, literacy, um, eradicate like a lot of the things that that are prevalent in our in our people's health and things like that, um, to uplift and inspire, to create, to, to have opportunities that we do for for our for what I'm doing now with the MGM um, company we have with um, my brother boy Gosh Daha, we, we we employ and uplift and upskill the pit and uh, the brothers and sisters to to start somewhere to where we give them envisions to have dreams to have run their own plumbing business or run their own electrical business or have their own um, business t- in order to to be their own boss and upskill and, and live a live a productive life in that sense. Like be the best version be the, of themselves. Be the best version of themselves, you know what I mean? And it well you are that inspiration. I know, I know, but I wanna but I, but a lot of brothers that have ain't born like that. I ain't born like I've been born. I ain't been gifted with what I've been gifted with. What, 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 what can the the everyday person just be aware? Just get educated. But educated on educated on the culture. Educated on 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 the plight of our people and what, what what's happening. Be be mean. Have a bit, have a interest in in knowing and what can be done and 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 help. So like what this, what this, what would you you take away thing? For you know our, our listeners here, or our, our viewers, mm. you know that that everyday person. So it's educate. Education is the key. Educate, learn about the culture, learn about, um, you know, be around community, be around. If you know no no an Aboriginal person or no other Aboriginal person. Try to engage, go to the to the medical centers, or the you know try to engage with them and see how you can you know learn and 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 really um, help in that sense. You know, I I think that that education piece can actually I think not it, just make you aware, but it can it can enrich I, your I own think, life. I, th- I think it should be taught in the school system. I think it should be 
you know, on a much broader scale in the work system and all that, you know what I mean? Because you ought to have some type of sort of temp- template that they, they can they can resort to. Because mm. I actually, I, I spoke with um, an Indigenous elder, mm. not like, and I've taken something away and do it every day after speaking to him. Deadly. And that's like that's a, I mean, you learn something now. Well, it's a, it's a connection and a, a, connection and a, th- and a thank you to um, to Mother Earth. That's what I'm saying. It's like you, you got uh, every morning, go outside and touch mm. touch a plant of sorts mm. or a bush mm. and just say thanks. Mm. And something that we can all learn and to all a, See, a bit an of Aboriginal, appreciation. In Aboriginal culture and our law, we we uh, when I went to back to my. My uncle, who's who's up in uh, North Coast, he's older, and I asked him about traditional law and a tribal law. Now, we we Aboriginal people believed in the one God, believed in the one power, and protect the earth and Mother Earth and you know and all this and that. So, at the end of the day, I've done a bit of stuff on astronomy and the the uh, you know. You look up, look up the stairs, and the stars, and there's planets, and there's sun, the moon. Like it's pretty fascinating, you know what I mean? And um, you got to be crazy to think there's not a creator, not a designer. You know what I'm saying? So if I if I pull my phone out, my iPhone, I put it there. I said, "Bruh, that just popped into existence just like that." Would you believe me? No. That's what I'm saying. So if everything we see in the heavens, in the earth, and everything in it. And you think it just happened by itself? Come on, man. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was listening to someone speak um, a couple of weeks ago and talking about like science and, and and nature and just science is okay if you're willing to like. Uh, there was a comment, a throw, uh, the throwaway line or the line was something to do with like. It's all okay if you're willing to forget one miracle, and that's the Big Bang. So where did it all come from? Because that's what scientists, you know, they go back to that this Big Bang. It's like, well, okay, well maybe that was the miracle. Mm. Well, I, I, I like the creation side of things. I thought, oh, mate, we're gonna go off on a tangent here, which we can't go off can't, on yeah, because yeah, if, time, if, I think it fascinates. <laughs> five five hours. <laughs> nah. it, 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 that sort of stuff. Fascinates me, yeah. Like absolutely fascinating. Like, um, are we alone? No way. Is there a creator? Hundred percent, bro. Like, Why? where do you, do, where do we go when we die? What happens? Is there? Are, are, is this real? Like, are we in well, reality? When, I I I genuinely question whether this is real. Hundred percent is real. Because I look at you and you, you know, I know you're there. I can feel you. I can yeah, touch you. I know, but you know what I mean. Like all the answers that that I've found, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. All the answers I've found, we were brought up, being Aboriginal, we are brought up Christian. But I wasn't really religious. But as I got to my teenage years, I wanted to get closer to God. So I wanted to learn about what we believed in, we were Church of England. So I wanted to believe what we believed in and what the core belief of Christianity was. So I've seen my people that, with, with knowledge and whatnot and, you know, started learning about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, this and that. And a lot of it didn't make sense to me. I started to study, study the historical Jesus, like prophet. Well, as a Muslim, we believe he's one of the mightiest men in, 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 in um, of, men, of all, all time, but he's a prophet of God. He's one that prayed to God with his, with his head to the foot, with his, head to his, his forehead to the ground. He asked God for help. So how, if he's part of God or, or son of God, he, why did he ask for help? I mean, it just didn't add up. Anyway, long, cut a long story short, I see my uncle um, up north, and he told me about about the about the believing in the one Creator, one Lord, and I had a good mate of mine. I read the Malcolm X autobiography, read the the uh, Muhammad Ali's book autobiography, and then I had a mate who was a Muslim brother, who was my manager for a long time. He's Sunny Bills and Quay's manager, Cody Nasser. Then I started learning about Islam. And all the, all the fundamentals, all the answers that I wanted answered, all everything that I wanted answered was come from the Quran, come from 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 Islam, and alhamdulillah, I've been 
I'm a Muslim uh, over 20 years, but I've, I've really s- sort of, um, you know, was you know back in the day I used to pray here and there, this and that, do my own thing, and you know sometimes I didn't have time, whatever. But now I'm, I haven't missed a prayer, haven't missed a salah, which is prayer, for about five, six years, bro. So, and I'm content with life. I'm ready for death. I'm ready for death. So if I'm ready, to, if I was, if I was to go today, alhamdulillah, inshallah, I'm going to a better place because it's all written in the Quran. Everything, every, everything, everything. It's a way of life, but everything you, you're talking about the afterlife, what's next, what's this and that. It's all, it's all, all the answers are in there. So you're a very strict Muslim. You pray. Yeah, well, I have, so is it five times. Five, five times. Five times yeah. a day. But I have my I have my my faults. You know, I'm not. Yeah, oh man, no one. We're, we're born sinners, but that's a that's a good thing about your Creator. He's that he's the most merciful, all all compassionate, and you turn back to him and you pray. You you you, you know, and it's your duty to to, to feel you, that you are forgiven because he's the Rahman Rahim, the most merciful, the most most compassionate so but i'll try to be be the best man i can be every day you know for my family for my for my kids for my friends for my people i interact with whatever hmm. D- just back to the um what what this country can do to help yeah indigenous people like okay i, sp- I asked you about the everyday person what 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 Changes in society could be implemented. I think, to I think I think the racism. I think to to advance the cause. Yeah, I think racism because racism is not you're not born racist. You know no. what I mean? You're taught racism, and like I said, it's all about education. Education is the key, but it's the right education and it's the truthful education that needs to be out there and need to be uh, widespread. And what what would you look to? Teach people about like we're talking at school, like at yes, school from level. A, from a school level, teach them the truth. Teach them. My, when I was back in school, I was, Captain Cook discovered Australia. You know what I mean? Like, teach them the truth. You know what I mean? And, and how there was the natives were here, and 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 see the you know teach the truth from the 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 the, the outset. So then, as a you know. As they evolve and grow, they'll learn more and more. Given that base knowledge, given that base, given that foundation, you know. Mm. Could go a long way, couldn't it? Yeah, of course. Because we are better together. There's no doubt. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like, like well, we're all enjoying the the fruits of this beautiful country. Mm. Um, you know. And, and we can live together, live in harmony, live in peace. Yeah. But you know, it's it's all about education. It's all about um, having that knowledge. Mm. I agree. Um, just quickly on your your sport and career. Mm. What's a what's a lesson it's taught you? What's it taught me? Yeah. What have you learnt from like what? What have you, what what have you talk about I've education for, for others? What 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 what's Anthony the man Mundine that's you know so confident the man Sam. the best ever? What 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 what's it taught you? It's taught me no dreams too big. Um, and anything is anything is possible. You know, to a certain degree, obviously. Obviously, you can't fly or nothing like that, but <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I, you know what we've I mean? but, we've we've got a potential. Like I could never be the fastest yeah. person on the planet. Yeah, like I just, I, I, yeah, obviously I, you got to yeah. know your limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta know your limits, <laughs> but, but no dream is too big. You know what I mean? I, I really feel like you're either born a wolf and a lion, or you're born a sheep. But you could turn them sheep if you educate them and put some. Belief and train them to a lion or a wo- lion or a wolf. Mm. You know what I mean. Mm. And that's the legacy I want to leave because I feel that I can. I have that. I have that um, effect. You have the power to inspire. Power to inspire. You're very. Um, you can. 
have that contagion effect on people. Yeah. You rub off then, on people. That's why when I told you about the, the year of 96, I knew I rubbed off on people. I knew mm. I, that I that I my words meant a lot. Yeah. To Jason Stevens and things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um on, on your footballing career, is there anything that you'd change? No. Nah. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I was a I was the baddest boy, bro. I was the baddest boy in the, I was the man, bro. Like I was literally honestly the top five players in the world at the time. Without a doubt. You, you can ask all my peers that. Ask every peer that I played from ninety six to two thousand. And everyone I'll be up there. You know what I mean? They all know. They all know. But the media wanna always downplay it and downplay me. Mm. I'm the baddest ever, bro. <laughs> call me call me Michael Jackson. I'm that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What what about I, I know I glossed over it a little bit before. What about that ninety nine grand final? Yeah. Like oh. I, I read I read about that after and it was Nathan Blacklock said he'd never seen you so upset. Yeah. No, but that, that that crushed me, bro. Because we 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 led fourteen nil. Uh, you know, we should we should put them away. You mm. know what I mean? We should put them away. But for what whatever reason, as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you you everything is written before we even born. You know what I mean? So our lives are written. What we're gonna do? What we're, where we're gonna go? And they don't want us to change that 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 that, that uh, destiny is. is Allah the King, but um, that, that that was devastating for me because you know that would have been obviously I went on GF with the with the prison side, but that was a team of superstars. Um, and this would, and the competition come back together, so this this was a full competition. Would have been my you know my first sort of full competition. I played in a few grand finals and lost a, lost a couple in the ninety six and ninety and ninety nine. Um. Yeah, bro, I was devastated for weeks. But people don't understand. The week before that, when I played the the sharks, oh. and I carved up. The day after, I got I got tonsillitis. I got tonsillitis. So I wasn't gonna play in the grand final. I was probably at sixty percent. I was I was probably at sixty percent in the grand final in ninety nine. I was on a drip for three days. Wow. And I didn't I didn't even go to the grand final with breakfast. Really? So yeah, I was I was down, bro. I was out. I wasn't I wasn't wasn't looking like making a game, but I said, no, nah, I gotta play. Gotta yeah. play. No you gotta stand how, up. No matter how yeah. I feel, I gotta play. A sixty yeah. percent the man yeah. is better than no man exactly. at all. <laughs> exactly. I was la- last question on your fo- on your sporting career. Do you think that adversity helped you? Hundred percent. Into your boxing career. Hundred percent. Like with like so everything you, from, the, from the adver- some t- people don't like I, I often speak to people like this they don't realize the benefit of hardship and the the benefit you, of adversity you, draw, you don't you, realize it at the time you can draw so like, much positive yeah. out of it man and that's what separates people like everyone's going to go through shit mm. everyone yeah but it's what you do next and how you approach that mm. and i just wonder about like you know We'll, we'll, we'll ask you about sliding doors, but I, I just wonder what happens to you if you if St. George win that final. Like, do you become a world champion? Yeah. Because, you know, you've got to the top mm. in that in the sport of rugby league. Mm. So do you get to the top of the sport in boxing? I guess we'll never know, but never it's know. just always like things like that mm. really interest me. We have a couple of questions for each and every guest. The first uh, one is the Dream Spine. This is brought to us by Tui's. They're all about teamwork and every team needs a quality spine. You've played with some fantastic players across the years. Um, would you mind um, giving us your, your best one uh, six seven or nine that you played seven. with or you played against? One, I've got to say probably Greg Inless. I reckon he's one of the best outside backs ever. Absolutely. Um, I've been on the receiving end of yeah. that palm before. And Greg Grio be be number one. Um, six, can I put myself or Yes. I'm a beast. Yeah, I'm well, 100% myself. Yeah, in my pick prime. yourself, 100%. In my prime, there's no one better, but I was a beast. Um, yeah, I back myself, especially with my confidence and, <laughs> and belief. I don't like that. So we'd be, we'd be, we'd be ready to go. Um, seven. 
Toby some good sevens. Um, Alfie, either Alfie, probably Johns. Andrew Johns, he's probably the best I've seen. Um, in the, uh, playing, playing against him and playing with him. Um, yeah, he's probably the best I've seen. Probably compliment my play because he can sort of be the be the um, what do you call it the general sort of. You just play off the back. Play room. off the back room <laughs> and just start doing my running game. So yeah, that'll be really probably be the seven and uh, nine. I've, I've got to go for Aldi, but he's he's one of the best. I, think, I believe uh, Benny Elias. Oh yeah, yeah Benny. Yeah, nice. Well, that, that's cool, Benny. That is um, that is quite the spine. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, big big thanks for Therese for that section of the show. Uh, and then we have three questions for, for each and every guest. Yeah. Now, this is a bit of a difficult one for you. Um, because if football didn't, we ask at every guest, yeah. if football didn't exist, what do you think you'd be doing? But football didn't exist, what do I think I'd be doing? Obviously, boxing, I, I believe. Boxing, I would probably do full-time boxing. And I think that... um. I'd achieve a lot more than what I did, you know, coming from having, having that experience, having that experience and, that, and having that, that foundation. Yeah, foundation of an emerald background. Mm. Let's just say, right, I give you an option to go back. Oh. Would, would, if you get, like, if you got to control your life, if you could go back and speak yeah. to that, that 10 year old. That eight eight to ten year old Anthony Mundine, would you tell him to go to boxing or say if you could nah. say so so sorry say if you could choose now for him yeah, 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 I know if you could choose now for him do you do you choose I the, and I give you the football path or the boxing path yeah. with what do you do oh yeah football and then boxing I do the really you do the same again yeah same thing if you say if you were the creator you you were the, you were your god. And you could go back in time. Yeah, I'd do the same thing. Do the same thing. I love them both so much. Yeah. Nice. Um, a sliding doors moment. You you think about maybe what, what if? Like what you think about, okay, if I'd have I had that choice. I'll tell you my sliding doors moment. My sliding doors moment would be, what if I stayed in football? 100... I would have been talked about as an immortal. I would truly believe that. I was. I would have. I would have just gotten better than what I already already was, and I wasn't. And me being me being what I was then was was one of the best. So to have another, I would have been twenty what twenty five. To have another, say, probably ten years in the game. Wow. Omg, I would have more highlights than friggin'. Christmas, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, would have been crazy, but that's just that's one of them what ifs moments, eh? Mm. Oh. Um, the most interesting person you've met. Most interesting person I've met, or well, one that I that I loved and adored from a young boy, um, was Muhammad Ali, and I had the chance of meeting him in, at the. Um, Sydney 2000 Olympics. Um, it was a bit sad because he had Parkinson's and he's, you know, it's a bit thing, but it was just an honor to shake the man's hand and have a little convo with him. Yeah, he did so much, didn't he? Mm. For sport and community. Yeah, bro. Mm. That's a that's a huge answer. Like, yeah. mm. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah, bro. Well, I've just got to say, we've had almost two hours. Yeah, I've absolutely, I love the brass. loved sitting here talking with you, <laughs> shooting the shit. Like I say, it is a bit of a, a pinch yourself moment for me. Um, you've had a thousand lives already. Yeah, and I think there's more to tell on the story of Anthony Chock Mundine, the man. I, I really do. Um, I think. The, the work that you're doing now sounds really exciting. Yeah. A couple of businesses mm. staying motivated, clearly still still training as well, yeah. which is which is done, super done, important. Done, done 8K this morning. Did 8K you? run. Just relax, you know what I mean? Easy work. What do you do 8K in? What do you, nah, no, I just, just, I just cruise. Well, just, probably six and a half minute Ks. When in my boxing days, I used to do five and a half, six, just nice and easy. But 
now about six and a half. Would you ever do a marathon? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing it. Maybe one day. Mate, City Marathon, September. September, maybe, maybe. I'd, but I could do it off the bat. I don't know you, you wouldn't even train? I wouldn't just... even train, just do it off the bat. <laughs> the longest I run is about 8K. But mentally, if I put my mind to it, I could do it, no problem. I might hit you up about that. I'm, I'm supposed <laughs> like to be. Not. Nah, <laughs> I, I'm supposed to be doing it in September, but oh, geez, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> not in the shape. No, oh, mate, it's just, it's mate, it's the process, the training. Yeah, I know, that, it's, that it's, it's training to kill it, bro. It's tough. But I just try to stay active. I will probably run three times a week, box a couple of times a week, couple so, of exhibitions in the. Yeah, I'm looking at a couple of exhibitions in the pipeline. So, is there any big names you've got lined up? <laughs> um, well, the Pacquiao fight was maybe was going to come up. The Papua New Guinea government wanted to. It's still possible. I was still waiting to hear back because they wanted to change it to September, September, mid September, on the Independence Day PNG. So I'm waiting to hear back from that soon. If if not, there's one in India. I'm, a, I'm an international player, but <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'd love to see that that check that you get for fighting over there, mate. There's some money oh, over yeah, there. Yeah, money over there, bro. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, mate. Is it? Thank you. On behalf of our listeners, ah, pleasure, everyone brother. here at pleasure, the Byram, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank pleasure, you so man. much. And like I say, honestly, from the 10 year old boy that I was to here now, it's a bit surreal. Nah, it's a pleasure, my brother. Peace.